Hello. And now what are we going to call you, huh? What are you going to call you? What, yawning. A big yawn. It's a big laugh. I was 11 when my brother was born. I have not only watched him grow in size, but also in personality and maturity. When I picked him up from school recently, he told me he had a discombobulated day, and I remembered the moment when the word bubble was the first in his vocabulary. Drew, how was your day? I had a discombobulated day. I, have a, I had a discombobulated day. His early years are treasured memories in the minds of me and my family, yet he has no recollection of any of it. And this is not the result of a mental condition or childhood trauma. This infantile amnesia or mental blank when it comes to recalling life before we were around three years old is universal among humans. Say I asked you to remember your dinner last night, what you ate, where you had it, if you enjoyed it. This would be an example of an episodic memory as it's your personal record of the event. Someone else may have eaten the same dinner alongside you, but their experience and therefore episodic memory of the meal would be slightly different to yours. Other examples of episodic memories would be your first kiss or your favourite vacation or the day your pet died. And it's the absence of this type of memory of situations and events from our very early years which characterises infantile amnesia. When was your earliest memory? I'm like three and a half. Like four. For the majority of us, our earliest memories are from around the ages of three to five. Interestingly, this is also a period of rapid development of language, and some researchers have suggested that this may show language is crucial in the storage of long-term memories. And this would make sense. Language helps us to actively describe and contextualise our memories, and therefore consolidate them in a way we couldn't when we were pre-verbal. What's good, Kino? However, experiments have shown animals also display a form of infantile amnesia, and since animals don't use language like we do, there must be other mechanisms involved. One possible explanation is that structures in our tiny infant brains simply aren't developed enough to create long-term memories. More specifically, two structures vital in the formation of memories, called the prefrontal cortex and the hippocampus, do not fully mature until the age of around three or four. The role of the hippocampus in memory is well studied, famously observed in Henry Millaison, commonly known as patient HM, who had parts of his hippocampus removed in an attempt to cure his epilepsy. Unfortunately, this surgery resulted in him developing a condition known as enterograde amnesia, where he lost the ability to form new memories. This meant that although he could remember events before the surgery, Every day after felt like the day of the operation. The case of patient HM shows our hippocampus is undoubtedly essential in the consolidation of episodic memories, and the fact that it's underdeveloped in babies may offer us an insight into the neural mechanisms behind infantile amnesia. The truth is, we don't know what causes childhood amnesia. It's likely to be lots of different things. Who knows what we're going to find? Thank you.